Today, we're going to be making the intraday zones that you guys see me use all the time in my videos. Let's go into actually making them right now. All right, so the way that my intraday zones work is I need to see reactions. If price doesn't react in a certain area, then it really doesn't care about that area in the first place. The reason why my breakouts are so aggressive because price cares about that area and when it goes above or below it, that's where price starts getting aggressive. So we see a reaction here, right? We see a reaction right here. We see it come down and it starts bouncing in this certain area. So there's a reaction there. I need to see multiple reactions in a certain area for it to be a zone. This is a reaction, this is a reaction, but it's not a zone until this area reacts. We see an aggressive push to the upside and it starts rejecting. We see that it's also bouncing in this area and it starts coming up. We don't have our zone until right there, right? So here is our zone, the high of that candle, and then the highest closure right there. This is our zone. Same thing here, right? The lowest closure and the lowest price right there. These are two of our zones. Now, we could either play a breakout, a bounce, or a rejection. You could play the breakout right here where it broke out. You could play the break and retest, which is right here. And that's the two scenarios right there. You can't play rejection because there's no rejection here. And this wasn't a zone yet, so this doesn't even count. The other area was right in the middle. We see a reaction, 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 reaction. The highest candle right in this area. And then the highest close, which is right there, right? You could play a rejection. So after this, there's one, two, and see how it broke out. And then it came back down. You can play a rejection, see how it closed in our zone, came down. That's a nice break and retest. You play puts into the zone. Next thing is you can play a breakout, right? You play a breakout right there into the next zone. Take some profits in that zone, just moving up your stop loss. Then it goes. The next area is right here, right? So we, now we have another zone. And let's delete this previous zone, right? We want to make zones that supplement the recent price action. So it's right in this area. We see the reaction here. And we see reactions, reactions, reactions. All right, so it's the same exact zone right here. Highest closure. And then the lowest closure right here, we have a zone. We can either play a bounce or a breakout. This is not a zone until right here, right? But this is the break and retest from the previous zone. Then it came back and made this a zone. Now we play the breakout. We played the breakout. Or you can play the breakout and retest in this area. And then it came down to this next zone which is where you start taking profits, right? Zone to zone. An area of reactions is always gonna be tested and it's not just gonna go through just like that unless price is very strong in one direction. So we see here, we have a high probability of a bounce. This is why we started taking profits. A break, retest, stop loss to zone. Then it came down to this next zone right here. You guys see it right there and we bounced. Let's just keep going, right? So we bounce, we are fully out at that area. And then we bounce. You could play a bounce, but the way the market structure is right now, we're just keep going down and down and down. It's not the smartest to play a bounce just yet, unless this bounced, but it had a higher chance of a breakout. You could play the breakout right there. It came down. That was a nice 70 cent move. Again, a 70 cent move on a zero DT is pretty large. That could have been a 15% move for the contracts. And then just kind of held this. This is where it started bouncing, came back, then bounced that area again. That's a nice bounce, right? That's what you want to see. You kind of see that market structure kind of go in the opposite direction now. See how we're just coming down, down, down. Now we came back up, bounced in this area. We came back down, bounced. That's where you can start looking for some calls. We came back up and bounced again. We're holding that area. Price is respecting that area. You could play to bounce this next zone right there. How we traded for today, right? We want to see reactions. We see a reaction there, but we can't make a zone because there's no other reaction. A reaction here, a reaction here. We got up here and reacted. We make the zone. The high of this candle, then the highest close right there. We make a zone. You can either play a rejection. If it rejects again and it didn't, it broke out. So you play the breakout or the break and retest. You get calls. And then you guys saw exactly what happened. We came up, reaction there come over we're just reacting in these area another reaction right there right we make our zone 
And the way that I trade, price action gets worse and worse as the day goes on for me, like reactions wise. Price action is more respected as the days go on, but I like the aggressive moves and it gets less and less volatile because as the day goes on, the volume starts to slow down, especially during lunchtime until that power hour, 3 o'clock p.m. Eastern. But here's another one. You play the breakout right there. That's nice, but it's not going to be as nice as these aggressive moves because it's later in the day. We had another move right here. Intraday, you see a reaction, 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 reaction. Our zone is created from this second reaction. High of that, high of this. You can play a rejection or a breakout. It broke out, came up to our zone, you take some profits, a break and retest, right? Zone back down to this zone, starting to bounce. Buyers starting to come in. Market structure is still going to this direction. And then you can play a breakout or retest, or you can play the bounce in that area. Now, this is essentially how I traded the intraday zones. It's a lot easier than it looks. The strategies are very simple. I like to keep my strategies very simple, but very effective. The reason why it's not going to be that easy is because we're human and we have, and we have emotions and we hesitate, right? The strategy that you have is about 20% of being a profitable trader. The other 80% is how you execute, right? Because you can have a lot of emotions and we're human, right? It just makes sense. You don't know how to control your emotions. You don't have you don't know how to be disciplined, right? You have to train yourself to be disciplined and you have to train yourself to execute at the right time. This is why the strategy seems so simple and so effective, but a lot of people, if they don't know how to actually execute, they're gonna get it wrong, right? It's easy to come on here and be like, all right, here's a zone, here's a zone, here's a zone. You know, you just play a breakout retest. But actually doing it live, like I do, is a little bit different and it's a lot harder to do. Because seeing this form live, you might get hesitant, you might you might get emotional, oh, you know, I, I don't think this is gonna go well. And then it comes up, right? A break and it starts to bounce. You're like, you know, this is probably gonna go down, I don't know. It starts going up and now you miss the move, right? And you get a hesitant. Or you see the break and retest and you don't get it until all the way over here and now you're barely up on the move or you could have took a loss because this thing you kept holding it because you're only up 2%, then it comes right back down, right? Us as humans, we wait too long for confirmation. Once you see the confirmation, you got to execute. A lot of people are too scared of taking a loss, but if you keep executing appropriately and actually seeing what's going on, your losses will be so small. You'll have like a 95% win rate because this strategy is very, very good if you know how to execute. If you don't, that's where you start getting the 55% win rate, 60% win rate, and your losses are going to be a lot bigger than your winners. You have, to be, you have to be great risk managers, and this strategy alone, if it doesn't break, you get out, right? And a very, very small loss, like I posted about two days ago. That, small, that was a very, very small loss. It has to go or we get out. So hopefully you guys learned something. I'll see you guys in the next video. Hey you, yes you. Listen, if you guys are not in my Discord chat room where I live trade every single morning, post all the zones, all the key levels, everything that I'm looking at for the day, post three to five lessons per week to teach you guys the exact strategy that I use that allows me to consistently bank on SPY every single day. That has helped thousands and thousands of students become profitable traders around the world. We got people in the UK, people in Canada, people in the United States. The best part is that you guys can join the chat room as well all you guys have to do is click the link in the bio or you guys can message me on instagram if you guys have any questions pop it up right here and i hope to see you guys in there peace hey yo Rand, turn that up